Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So as we are discussing uh, about the nanoparticles and its uh, different uh, you know characteristics and also uh, we are talking about that uh, what are the different methods of uh, synthesis of nanoparticles. In the previous lecture we are uh, discussing about that what is the physical method by which you can uh, synthesize that nanoparticles. We have given some you know examples of that uh, synthesis of nanoparticles by physical methods uh, like you know ball milling process even chemical vapor deposition and also other you know techniques those are available and uh, in this lecture we will try to uh, learn uh, something more about that synthesis of nanoparticles here we will try to uh, understand how that uh, nanoparticles can be synthesized uh, by chemical uh, methods so as uh, we have actually discussed that there are two methods one is called physical and another is called chemical method physical method is called the top down method where uh, you know that the bulk material is physically broken down to make a smaller molecules whereas uh, chemical uh, method this is basically based on that nucleating of that atomic sized materials into that you know uh, desired nano sized particles and in chemical methods it depends on metal uh, what type of actually materials to be you know generated based on which that you know chemical methods should be executed and also we have uh, discussed uh, something about that uh, what are the you know common methods for physical and chemical methods that are available and uh, in industry also they are following those methods uh, to produce that nanoparticles though nowadays uh, you know different investigators they are finding different way of that producing nanoparticles from different sources not only that uh, material uh, to material uh, you know nanoparticles sometimes that nanoparticles are being produced from the natural sources also by uh, physical as well as chemical methods so here we will try to understand that chemical method of synthesis of some nanoparticles with some example and this chemical method is also will be called as that weight based approach of that nanoparticle synthesis. And uh, what are the different weight based uh, methods for synthesis of nanoparticles that you will see some uh, names are given in the slides. Uh, those are polyol method, microemulsion method, Solgel method, thermal decomposition, hydrothermal, even sonochemical reactions. You will see that electrochemical synthesis photochemical synthesis as well as metal vapor synthesis. And these uh, weight based techniques provide the simplest approach to produce that small and nano dispersed particles. And these methods are often classified on the basis of either the source of energy or size selection. And let us uh, uh, have uh, some idea of that polyol method by which that nano particle can be synthesized. This polyol method basically uses non aqueous liquid like polyol example ethylene glycol, polyethylene glycol or diethylene glycol like this uh, that will be used as a solvent and reducing agent. And uh, from where that you know uh, materials to be synthesized that metal some metal oxide nanoparticles even synthesis of bimetallic alloys and core shell nanoparticles are widely synthesis by this polyol method. And uh, this method involves the reduction of a precursor such as metal salt from which that you can get that nanoparticles by ethylene glycol at a, at a uh, elevated you know, temperature in the presence of polyol like polyvinyl you know, uh, pyrrolidone uh, or it is said as the PVP. So, uh, uh, based on this presence of this you know solvent of uh, polyvinyl uh, pyrrolidone, then uh, there will be a reduction of that precursor in presence of the solvent at some temperature. And in this case, the trace amounts of additives sometimes uh, to be you know added, which may uh, affect on the synthetic pathways as well as on the uh, morphologies of both nuclei and products of nanoparticles which will be easier to then synthesize this nanoparticles there. Let us uh, have an example of that synthesis of uh, silver nanoparticle by this polyol method. So in this case you will see that ethylene glycol to be used as a you know a solvent. In this case uh, this uh, ethylene glycol around 5 milliliter typically uh, first to be heated in an oil bath at uh, 148 degrees Celsius for 4 hours to you know remove that trace uh, amounts of water from that uh, you know ethylene glycol. 
then uh, a syringe pump will be used to uh, regulate that uh, you know, simultaneous injection by that syringe pump of around 3 milliliter typically ethylene glycol solutions into the hot uh, you know ethylene glycol that is made earlier at 140 degrees Celsius at a rate of uh, 45 milliliter per hour and then uh, uh, one of the solutions uh, of course that should contain 0.94 molar silver nitrate there that you have to add and the other one should contain the 0.375 molar of polyvinyl uh, pyrrolidone and in this case you know that this you have to add along with those you know solvent uh, some amount of salt like 0.22 millimolar of sodium chloride. Then uh, you have to stir those uh, solutions by magnetic uh, stirrer. So in this case magnetic, uh, magnetic stirring uh, uh, you know can be applied throughout the entire synthesis and the typical synthesis executes through a number of color changes. You will see that during that synthesis there will be a some change of color of that solution before the uh, color become uh, stable at approximately 46 hours then you can assess that uh, you know uh, what actually in uh, whether this uh, you know nanoparticle synthesis direction is going properly or not if it is not happened then uh, you have to change that you know proportion of that or concentration of that solvent there now to minimize that temperature perturbations during that you know sampling after getting that you know color change the glass pipette to be held just above the solution and uh, preheated uh, for 30 seconds before that immersion and in this case the samples to be washed with you know acetone and then uh, uh, with water to remove most of the ethylene glycol and uh, PVP solution. And uh, uh, during this washing uh, you will see that the suspension that is to be centrifuged at uh, 16,000 rpm for 10 minute or 1 hour but depending on that whether this acetone or water can be used or not. Now to make sure that most of the silver particles taken from that reaction are recovered. So whenever that you know silver particles nanoparticles to be produced that will be you know taken out after that reaction okay at least uh, after one hour you can say and also uh, before that uh, you have to you know continuously you know centrifuge there and also uh, then uh, finally you know that the sample is to be dispersed in water for further characterization by different you know characterizing equipment there or sophisticated instruments are there for characterizing for their you know surface area even strength even other uh, material characteristics to uh, know also what is the composition actually after that uh, uh, making that composition uh, uh, this uh, nanoparticles and uh, also uh, you can assess it uh, what will be the you know thermal conductivity electrical conductivity all those properties you can measure and also how that you know mass will be changed with respect to uh, time uh, and also with respect to temperature how it will be changing that is by tz also you can you know assess that so this is uh, you know, one of the important you know uh, process of that uh, you know synthesis of nanoparticles by this chemical method so you can easily uh, you know uh, uh, make that silver nanoparticle by this polyol method so in this case only that solvent you uh, need one is uh, ethylene glycol another is you know that uh, uh, pvp uh, uh, also some amount of salt is required and also your experimental uh, you know arrangement or facility should be made in thus in such a way that there will be a you know syringe pump there will be you know uh, what is that uh, magnetic uh, stirrer and also you can say that the temperature uh, arrangement uh, where that you can maintain up to a certain, uh, certain degree of uh, Celsius and uh, uh, for that you need some you know thermocouple even with you know controlling system. And uh, also uh, uh, this you know step by step uh, that uh, you have to follow this uh, you know method to uh, you know synthesize that nanoparticles of silver. It is given in the slides. Uh, so uh, based on this you know uh, step by step methods you can easily uh, synthesize that nanoparticle. Then uh, another uh, method of that synthesis of nanoparticle by chemical uh, you know uh, approach it is called microemulsion method. In this case you will see that uh, uh, some surfactant molecules uh, will be used to form some mono uh, layer at the interface between oil and water okay that you have to use some oil you have to use some water then oil and water is actually immiscible. So uh, in that case uh, micro emulsion to be uh, produced uh, that will be you know thermodyl thermodynamically stable 
and also isotropic and in that case uh, this uh, microemulsion whenever these two immiscible uh, you know water and oil phases are to be mixed by stirring or by you know mechanical agitation there you will see that formation of uh, fine droplet and uh, also water droplet uh, will be there in presence of surfactant. So, here surely that we have to produce that microemulsion which is stable in presence of that surfactant just by you know mechanical provision. And these surfactant molecules will form that monolayer at the interface between that oil and water with the hydrophilic uh, head group and also you can say that hydrophobic tails group uh, of that surfactant molecules in that you know aqueous phase and in the oil phase uh, respectively. And the properties of that nanoparticles prepared by the microemulsion method depend on the type and structure of the surfactant. Okay. What type of surfactant or what is the structure of that surfactant whether it will be you know cationic or anionic and uh, or also uh, whether it will be you know that uh, uh, hydrophilic tail or hydrophobic tail will be uh, you know more uh, dominate to uh, act on that you know emulsion or not. And also how that you know monolayer it will be formed at the you know interface between oil and water like this. So, uh, it depends on that uh, type of the surfactant and also the structure of that surfactant and here uh, based on those surfactant and the microemulsion production and also monolayer product generation in that you know surface of that or you can say the interface of that oil and water. So, let us have an example for that microemulsion method uh, for synthesis of magnetic nanoparticles. Here you will see you will get uh, two different kinds of uh, you know magnetic nanoparticles by this uh, method. Some nanoparticles may be of that coated, some may be uh, uncoated way you can say that. So, you can uh, make coated nanoparticles and uncoated nanoparticles. Let us have this systematic way of that production of or synthesis of magnetic uh, nanoparticles by this microemulsion method. So, in this case first you have to uh, produce that stable microemulsion of some uh, you know that uh, immiscible you know phases. So, in this case you will see that uh, microemulsion of cyclohexane and uh, aqueous phase and water ok. Cyclohexane that is organic uh, solvent and also aqueous phase these are uh, you know immiscible uh, phases in presence of sub surfactant that surfactant here is breeze 97 this breeze 97 this is one type of surfactant this is basically polyoxyethylene 10 oleol ether this is a one type of surfactant you can say. So, this uh, stable micro stubble micro uh, you know emulsion of that you know cyclohexane and uh, water in presence of this breeze 97 can be formed ok by using different organic uh, bases as uh, you know precipitant agent like cyclohexyl amine and oleolo amine. And uh, uh, we will see that uh, uh, the aqueous phase to be made uh, at 1 uh, uh, molar in uh, iron 3, the 0 0.5 uh, molar in iron 2 and 0 0.1 molar in hydrochloric acid to avoid that uh, ferrous oxidation which is formed there. So, uh, in this case uh, that uh, you have to get that precipitant uh, uh, agent or uh, from that you know different organic bases as a uh, precipitant agent that you have to uh, use uh, that agent as you know cyclohexylamine and olylamine uh, you know compound. And in that case uh, for each synthesis that 250 ml of a microemulsion that will contain a volume ratio around 90 is to 7 is to 3 you can say of cyclohexane is to breeze 97 and aqueous phase uh, there. So, within this ratio that you have to follow that uh, this uh, two immiscible phases and uh, with that you know uh, surfactant there. And they are uh, uh, typically 250 ml of that you know microemulsion can be produced uh, you know that containing uh, a volume ratio of this cyclohexane present aqueous phase. So, uh, then uh, what you have to do uh, after uh, you know production of that you know this uh, microemulsion by that you know aqueous and uh, you know organic immiscible solvent in presence of surfactant then it will be you know stirred and then passed with nitrogen at uh, room temperature uh, during you know uh, 10 minutes there. After that samples to be placed in a thermostatic bath at 50 degree Celsius with magnetic uh, you know stirring. Then uh, the injection of that uh, base for precipitating the particles to be then carried out 
by you know waiting at least for 5 minutes after the micro emulsion uh, when it is formed. And uh, the formation of that micro emulsion at uh, 50 degree Celsius can easily be recognized by the change from a light scattering emulsion to a non scattering single transparent phases. So, here uh, this is the characteristics of that you know micro emulsion which uh, you can uh, get uh, for its you know identity at this 50 degree Celsius. Then uh, after that uh, now you have to select whether you have to synthesize that coated nanoparticles or not. If you are not actually wish, uh, uh, wishing to uh, make that you know coated nanoparticles then uh, it can be regarded as the category 1 that is uncoated particles to be produced for that what is the step to be followed. So, for that category 1 that means uncoated particles uh, can be synthesized by injecting 4 ml of that cyclohexylamine that will be diluted in 10 ml of cyclohexane and that with that you know cyclohexylamine at uh, you know 50 degree Celsius. After that uh, the micro emulsion will be you know changed to uh, you know black color and uh, the formation of some large uh, aggregates can be observed there. And this will indicate uh, the formation of that magnetic particles and their aggregation. Then after waiting for around 15 minutes uh, the product can be you know cooled to room temperature and uh, to be washed with a large amount of then acetone. And then uh, the precipitate whatever it will be there at this you know room temperature it will be washed 3 times with uh, 0 0.5 percent uh, tetra methyl uh, ammonium hydroxide uh, to remove that surfactants uh, which were actually earlier mixed there to form that micro emulsion from that particle surface. And then you can uh, follow after that washing of that uh, acetone to you know flocculate that particles there after washing you will get that flocculate of the particles there and after that that particles will be you know dried at 65 degree celsius uh, at least for uh, 24 hours ok. So, at this uh, you know uh, particles it will be regarded as that uncoated nanoparticles uh, of that. Uh, and then second category it will be that coated nanoparticles. So, in this case what you have to do that uh, some coating materials to be used there. So, what are the coating materials to be used uh, for that? So, generally oleoil uh, I mean or uh, uh, oleic acid uh, uh, that can be used for that uh, coating material and in that case the particles can be synthesized by injecting. 13.8 uh, uh, ml of uh, uh, oleoil I mean uh, 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 which will be diluted in 10 ml of uh, cyclohexane at uh, 50 degree Celsius. So, in this case the micro emulsion also it will be changes to black without particle aggregation here whereas earlier it will be the black uh, color will be formed uh, just with uh, you know particle aggregation here there will be no aggregation of that particle. Now, after waiting of that again 15 minutes. Uh, 150 ml of uh, that synthesis product to be separated. And then uh, uh, a mixture of 2 point uh, you know 40 gram of oleic acid and uh, 3.24 you know gram of uh, oleoil I mean uh, you know uh, diluted in cyclohexane to be added to this part and uh, to be stirred for 30 minutes at uh, around 50 degree Celsius. After that the particles which will be obtained in both parts of the synthesis then to be flocculated with ethanol and uh, separated and redispersed into uh, two times uh, uh, dispersed uh, two times uh, in uh, some other solvent like heptane. And uh, then the final stage you can dry that materials that is particles which is formed here under vacuum at uh, around 30 degree Celsius for their uh, you know further uh, characterization. So, this is the final stage uh, how can you get this you know this nanoparticles of that. So, uh, interesting is that uh, you need some solvent, you need some you know that surfactant uh, first of all you have to make some emulsion and then uh, you know whether uh, from that emulsion you are uh, you know making that coated materials or uncoated nano materials or not that you have to decide. If you are making that uh, uncoated uh, materials in that case uh, you have to you know 
inject 4 ml of cyclohexylamine diluted in 10 ml of cyclohexan at 50 degree Celsius. Whereas, in case of uh, coated materials in that case uh, oleylamine or uh, oleic acid uh, it will be you know uh, added for that coating and uh, it can be uh, again then synthesized by injecting of 13.8 ml of uh, oleylamine diluted in 10 ml of uh, cyclohexane at 50 degree Celsius. And the remaining step you will see that almost same in that case you will see some uh, you know change of color it, it can be observed with some aggro, uh, aggregation uh, uh, even uh, you know uh, uh, without aggregation also there. So, in that case uh, uh, you will see that final uh, you know stage of that you know particle formation that uh, of course will be dried at uh, 65 degrees Celsius at least for 24 hours. And uh, in the case of uh, you know category 2 coated uh, particles in that case you have to you know uh, dry that particles under vacuum at 30 degrees Celsius. So, after production of that material production uh, that is nanoparticle size then you have to characterize it by different you know uh, uh, instruments like you know you have to characterize it by same team means uh, microscopic images for that you know specific surface area detection even other properties to find it out. So, uh, then we understood here that what is the micro emulsion method based on which you can you know synthesize nanoparticles. Another method let us uh, discuss here it is called Sol gel method. This is also one of the important you know method based on which you can easily get that uh, you know nanoparticles. So, in this case you will see that you have to follow some proper wet route for that preparation of nanostructure materials specially uh, metal oxides are being you know synthesized by this you know Sol gel method. And this method is uh, based on the hydroxylation and uh, condensation of molecular precursors in solution is being done and, uh, and uh, this actually uh, precursor solution uh, initiating a sol of you know nanometric particles there ok uh, by hydroxylation and condensation. Additional condensation also uh, being done uh, with inorganic polymerization that may lead to a three dimensional metal oxide network uh, that is denominated uh, uh, as wet gel here. And also extra heat treatments are needed to obtain that final crystalline state of that you know nanostructure because these reactions are performed at a room temperature. And also the sol gel process includes hydrolysis and condensation of metal alkoxides. In this case uh, metal alkoxides basically good uh, precursors uh, due to their you know endurance in the face of hydrolysis. Uh, that is the hydrolysis step replaces an alkoxide with a hydroxide uh, you know group from water and free alcohol which is generated. And factors that need to be considered uh, in this uh, sol gel method uh, are like what are the type of solvent that you are using, what temperature that you are maintaining and also what type of precursor that you are taking there will be some catalyst for that reaction what catalyst you are uh, you know selecting even uh, at a certain pH uh, that you have to maintain that reaction some additives and uh, also you have to use uh, and also uh, some mechanical agitation is required uh, for this uh, you know method of sol gel to produce that nanoparticles. Now, let us uh, have an example here also to produce you know tilicon dioxide powders ok. In this case uh, uh, it is here Solzes method in this case uh, TiO2 nano powders uh, can be synthesized by that Solzel method using uh, here titanium 4 uh, butoxide as a titanium source. So, it is titanium oxide powders to be produced now tilicon here it is not tilicon this is titanium oxide to be produced. Uh, here in this case uh, three different alcohols uh, can be used like ethanol, propanol, and butanol. Diethanol amine also you can use as a stabilizing agent to prevent precipitation during that uh, preparation of that salts. Hydrochloric acid as a catalyst and deionized water can be used uh, to prepare the salts. And salts can be prepared in a beaker with continuous magnetic steering. Then, uh, diethanol amine to be mixed with the uh, titanium uh, butoxide uh, under magnetic steering for 30 minute at room temperature after uh, 
which alcohol to be added to the titanium DEA solution that means diethanol amine and titanium solution mixer. Steering to be continued for another than 30 minutes and then composition of that titanium biotoxide uh, even uh, diethanol amine and that alcohol a ratio to be maintained uh, you know uh, as 2 is to 1 is to 8 by volume and then finally that previously prepared that uh, you know salt gel solution consisting of alcohol and water to be slowly added drop wise and steered for another 30 minutes that will give you that homogeneous solution. After that that solves with that addition of hydrochloric acid to be prepared but in the last step a solution containing alcohol appropriate amounts of water and 0 0.15 milliliter of hydrochloric acid to be added. In this case increasing that amount of alcohol that will enable the preparation of a solution with a small concentration of acid that will prevent precipitation during the drop wise addition. Also if you are going to you know determine the influence of that presence of diethylamine uh, in the system uh, then that salts uh, can uh, be prepared without the addition of a some uh, flocculent uh, as uh, you know resisting agent it is called deep flocculent and uh, all of these salts then can be aged at uh, room temperature for 24 hour for the hydrolysis process and then subsequently the prepared samples can be treated by heating at the rate of 50 degree celsius per you know hour until the target temperature of 500 degree celsius is reached and then uh, you have to maintain it at the target temperature for 90 minute and after that uh, you will see that that uh, titanium oxide will be formed as a powder and uh, you will see that after that it will be crushed for further you know uh, fineness uh, in a mortar. So this is uh, called salt gel method. So what is the basic things is that you have to uh, produce that salts uh, in presence of sub solvent here with that precursor like alcohols, ethanol uh, or butanol those are solvents along with that precursor of that you know titanium uh, 4 butoxide okay, uh, which is actually coming from that uh, titanium source and then you have to uh, make that, that salts in a beaker with some continuous steering based on that proportion of that uh, compound along with that uh, deionized water, water in presence of some catalyst even acid for maintaining pH uh, you know that. So in this way you can produce that salts and then uh, uh, some uh, you know solvent that diethylamine uh, to be mixed with that you know uh, butoxide under magnetic stirring for 30 minutes at room temperature and after which that alcohol to be added to the you know uh, mixture of titanium and diethylamine solution. In this case uh, then uh, you will see that some homogeneous solution will be formed after that you know uh, as per step given here you will get finally that you know uh, uh, titanium oxide powder okay, and it will be uh, crushed again in the mortar and to get that the final form of that nanoparticle. Another method we will discuss here it is called thermal decomposition. Here also you will see that nanoparticles uh, with a high level of monodispersity and uh, size you know uh, control can be achieved by high temperature decomposition of uh, some organometallic uh, precursors or uh, uh, carbonyls that is uh, you know by using uh, organic solvents and uh, also in presence of surfactants. Generally uh, by this thermal decomposition metal oxide nanoparticles are you know produced by this method. So in this case uh, you will see that some you know organometallic precursors to be required carbonyls uh, uh, maybe you can use as a precursor and also uh, along with that organic solvents and surfactants will be required. So what are that organic metallic precursors to be used like here it is uh, given in the slide uh, it is represented as you know that MN plus ACACN here M means uh, uh, you will see that some metal like uh, iron, manganese, cobalt, nickel, chromium and n is the some coefficient that is 2 or 3 that uh, you know number uh, balance and also ACAC is basically that 
acetyl uh, acetone net uh, has uh, you know uh, denoted by that ACAC and then uh, you will see that another group it will be called that MX uh, uh, cup X that means here metal cupheron complexes to be uh, you know used there as a precursor. In this case cuff means here uh, normal nitro uh, so phenyl hydroxyl amine here there other uh, uh, precursor may be you know that carbonyls like you know ferric carbon uh, net to be used or FeCO5 to be used and organic solvents and surfactants such as you know fatty acids oleic acid and uh, hexa disyl amine can be used. So, uh, in this case there will be some uh, ratios to be followed. In this case the ratios of that uh, you know starting reagents including organometallic compounds, surfactant and solvent are the decisive actually parameters for the control of size and also morphology of that magnetic nanoparticles. And in this case the reaction temperature, reaction time are the crucial for the precise control of size and morphology of that nanoparticles. Let us have an example for this synthesis of nanocrystals of metal oxides like iron oxide, manganese oxide or copper oxide. Those uh, oxide you can uh, you know produce by this method here. So, for that uh, the step by step method is given here. Initially that you have to prepare the metal cupheron precursor uh, you know as uh, you know base uh, materials on the precipitation of metal ions from you know aqueous solution at a specific pH with cupheron and the ammonium salt of here it is given normal nitroso phenyl hydroxyl amine. After that you have to dry it as a powder for uh, powder of that metal cupheron nets uh, and uh, then uh, you know you will see that uh, it will decompose at uh, temperature of 180 to 30 or 205 degrees Celsius for decomposing uh, compound like that here uh, uh, FeCoP3, MnCoP2 and then Cu, Cu uh, you know uh, P2 respectively when heated in in a you know some DTA or TGA apparatus under nitrogen. So, this is uh, you know the second step then uh, uh, decomposition products that then will be resulted as a you know uh, Y iron oxide and manganese oxide and you know copper uh, metal as. Next uh, what you have to do to remove that oxygen and water in the you know uh, uh, complexes 7 gram of you know uh, typically that tile amine uh, uh, is to be heated to uh, you know 100 degree Celsius for 1 to 1.5 hour and then you have to do it repeatedly uh, by evacuating at a you know certain pressure and then uh, you have to evacuate it to 20 uh, you know uh, milliliter uh, and then passed with uh, some you can inert gas like argon. And then uh, that solution of you know 0 0.3 molar of that FeCoP3 that you know that decomposition compound in uh, actyl uh, sorry uh, octyl amine to uh, be treated to the same way at 60 degree Celsius. And then uh, you know there will be a reaction to be initiated and that uh, reaction which is to be initiated by that rapid injection of that 4 ml of uh, you know uh, iron cup P3 uh, solution and that will be done into a uh, you know uh, trioctyl amine at 300 degree Celsius under you know vigorous uh, you know steering uh, and an atmospheric uh, pressure. After that uh, when that reaction to be allowed or initiated uh, at that 300 degree Celsius by steering you will see that there will be a change of color of that solution from colorless to the dark brown and that evaluation of gas will uh, in indicate the decomposition of that metal uh, cupheron complexes and then uh, uh, you will see that uh, after the solution uh, is heated for 30 minutes at 200 uh, around 220 uh, or 25 degrees Celsius the reaction uh, will be stopped and, uh, and the solution uh, can be allowed to you know cool. And uh, then uh, what you have to do at room temperature uh, after cooling the flux uh, 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 you know uh, you have to you know uh, transfer it to a flask that flask will contain you know nanocrystals of that iron oxide in both dark brown 
clear liquid supernated uh, and a uh, you know precipitate that is obtained in that uh, you know after that reaction. After that you have to add some uh, amount of organic solvents uh, around 1 to 2 ml such as uh, you know that uh, toluene you can use even uh, chloroform also you can use to this precipitate uh, which will give you that uh, you know clear deep brown you know dispersions of iron oxide in nano crystals. And uh, then uh, you have to cool it to again that room temperature uh, for a weeks uh, or you can keep it uh, for weeks uh, at room temperature. And then uh, you know that uh, you know form that iron uh, you know oxide nanocrystals will be you know becoming stable at that you know uh, room temperature for uh, after one week. And after that you have to add some volume of uh, you know excess uh, methanol maybe you know three times of that volume of that uh, whatever you know uh, solution you are give, uh, having in that uh, nanocrystals uh, form. And then uh, the iron oxide that nanocrystals uh, then uh, you will see that with the uh, you know addition of that methanol it will give you the precipitation uh, as a brown powder. And uh, then uh, after adding of that methanol to that supernated of that uh, reaction that will give you that brown precipitate which can also be you know uh, redispersed and then uh, reprecipitated by that suitable uh, solvent. And then uh, what you have to do uh, similar you know procedures can be uh, used in that you know synthesis of uh, you know manganese oxide and copper oxide in nanocrystals. In that case uh, uh, the powder uh, XRD can be you know performed for analysis of nanocrystals nature of that samples its morphology and other you know characteristics. And in that case uh, you can get that particles with average sizes down to 4 nanometer in this case uh, by this method of synthesis. And also if you you know lower that you know temp feed temperature and lowering that feed precursor concentration you can get this uh, even uh, below of this nano uh, 4 nanometer you know particles there. So you can up to uh, you can get up to 4 nanometer if you are just lowering that feed temperature and then uh, you know lowering that feed uh, precursor concentration. But you can try further uh, just you know uh, reducing that feed temperature and then uh, precursor concentration maybe there you can get uh, you know uh, even uh, less you know uh, size of that nanoparticles. So this is the you know basic way of by which you can by, by thermal decomposition you can say you can get that nano crystals of uh, different you know oxide uh, uh, material. So, here uh, we then uh, understand here what is that you know method of uh, thermal decomposition, sol gel method, even microemulsion uh, you know procedure to produce that nano uh, particles there. Sometimes you know that one step also uh, method can be followed to you know synthesize that uh, some nano particles by direct thermal decomposition method. Uh, in this case uh, tenorite one example it is given that uh, to produce uh, tenorite nanoparticles by direct thermal decomposition method. In this case some you know uh, copper sulphate 5 hydrate uh, you know uh, complex or uh, sodium carbonate uh, and distilled and deionized water uh, can be used to make uh, you know copper oxide nanoparticles. In this case uh, you know as per uh, you know uh, uh, information given in the slide here you will see that some complex of that you know brosenite to be prepared by you know addition of 0 0.5 uh, molar of sodium carbonate solution to a 0 0.5 molar of copper sulphate solution at a rate of uh, you know 4 ml uh, per minute. Uh, that will be you know done drop wise for 1 hour with uh, vigorous steering at around 1000 rpm at uh, 55 degrees Celsius. And in that in that case you will see that uh, there will be a precipitation uh, formation that will be uh, color will be uh, green and then it will be filtered and uh, uh, then it will be rinsed uh, three times with warm deionized, uh, deionized water and then uh, it can be dried at 70 degrees Celsius for several hours. And uh, then uh, a small fraction of that produced precursor to be uh, used for analyze and then rest to be calcinite. Uh, calcined uh, in air in a muffled furnace at 750 degrees Celsius for 2 hour. And uh, 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 you will see that uh, uh, the crystalline structure of the precursor and copper oxide nanoparticles uh, 
can be formed at this you know temperature of this 750 degrees Celsius uh, after that uh, calcination of 2 hours and uh, that uh, nanoparticles uh, after that it will be characterized by uh, different characterization techniques. Uh, generally x-ray diffraction being done at a certain you know wavelength to know that uh, different components of that you know uh, nano uh, crystals of that copper oxide and uh, also that you know uh, structure and morphology. Also you will see that thermal behavior for that uh, precursor what is to be used actually is uh, studied through that uh, thermogravimetric you know analysis uh, which can be performed under an ambient air flow. And also you have to remember that that morphology and average particle size uh, are to be analyzed after formation of these uh, nanoparticles and that will be analyzed by some microscopic uh, you know uh, image uh, system that is same team there are so many you know other you know microscopic image analysis tools are there you can you know assess it. So uh, we learned here that some uh, you know chemical method uh, by which uh, you can uh, you know synthesize uh, nanoparticles of this you know specific examples also given here. And uh, you can follow other different methods which are here uh, given in the slides also uh, that there are other several methods. But we cannot discuss here all those methods here only uh, specific uh, two three methods uh, were discussed briefly. For further study you can uh, uh, follow some reference books to you know know more about this you know nanoparticle synthesis either by uh, you know physical or chemical method. So as an uh, undergraduate you know uh, course uh, I actually uh, should limit uh, this up to uh, this uh, you know brief introduction on this you know nanoparticle characteristics even what is the definition of nanoparticles, what is the basic feature of that nanoparticles and the few methods of that you know synthesis of that nanoparticles by physical and chemical methods. So I think you understood this at least that some brief introduction and also you have learned something about that nanoparticles, what is that, how it is defined, what is the characteristic methods and how it can be synthesized. Though here it is not discussed that how to characterize those nanoparticles after formation. You can follow other course for characterization method you know that will be helpful for you. And then uh, in the next successive uh, lecture we will try to understand uh, something more about that you know solid fluid uh, system where we will be discussing about some adsorption characteristics there. So in that uh, module of that adsorption characteristics we will try to you know learn what is the basic principles of that adsorption, what is the application of adsorption and also how to you know analyze that adsorption characteristics by uh, isotherms also what is the adsorption kinetics that we will be discussing in the successive lectures. So thank you for your uh, kind attention, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.